Very long day yesterday. Um, yeah, a lot of people emailing and asking lots of questions, obviously, about water temperature and oxygen, what they should be doing. Now, the ones that are emailing me, most of my clients anyway, they're already doing the right thing because they're saying, my dissolved oxygen le reading is this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, the fact that you're monitoring regularly is great. And the fact that you've got aeration on standby is great. It's the ones that don't do anything, carry on fishing, carry on regardless, blah, 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 blah. And then they ring you when the fish are dying and there's no other, they haven't done anything else. You know, they won't spend money on a decent um, dissolved oxygen meter because they say they can't afford it. But they'll buy a load of fish in the winter, you know. It's, it, it, I know everyone's got different circumstances and situations, but being aware is the most important thing so you can't beat monitoring is i heard someone say last year and um, oh I, when they're gasping on the top that tells me that uh, the oxygen's low no that's too late then they're, they're far too stressed already then and it does happen in nature naturally that will happen in unmanaged waters and and and, and all with pollutions and with with with, with uh, all manner of different environmental factors but when we're involved with managing and running these fisheries it is whoever's involved it's their responsibility to, to, to have that information and also to prioritise what they're investing in. So if you haven't got decent um, equipment to manage and run your fishery, but yet you're spending money on fish every year, you're not a very good fishery manager. It's simple as that. And when you, when you start suffering and losing fish and then your, your knee-jerk reaction is just to replace them in the winter, that's not good fishery management. So... Everyone who's just monitoring at the moment, and some people have got super saturation, some people have got obviously algal blooms and this, that, and the other. You just have, you just want to be ready, on hand, so that you've got a working aerator and you've got as much support and help as you can on site for when you have an oxygen, when when it might crash, when you have an algal bloom crash. Which which you know a lot of a lot of algae doesn't. It, it's not a problem. It, it comes and goes with with no no drama. But you've just got to be aware, and that's all you can do. And then, you know, if you look at your, your stocking densities and think, well, it's high, you know, blah, 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 and you know, if you know in the back of your mind you've got a high stocking density, it's now's not the time to sort that out. It's the winter time. Um, but obviously, weedy lakes, everyone's going to suffer. Everybody's suffering right now because of the extreme heat. I mean, the last thing I want to do is go fishing right now. We have to be in the water doing bits and pieces, but that's got nothing to do with fishing at this time of year. Um, it's just very, very, very hot, obviously. And if it's hot for us, it's hot for the fish. I would never, ever, ever get fish out of water, regardless of what species. I, I saw yesterday, I've seen someone had a match yesterday on a lake not far from here, and they caught a lot of um, silverfish, and they've got them in a sling on the bank in like 30 degree heat. And because they probably swam away, most of them would have swam away when they put them back. They think that's right. All just for that one picture. It's not worth it. It's not worth it because I guarantee I'll put money on the fact that where that fishery is, they'll wander around in the next day or two and they will find some of those fish dead. Simple because they cannot hope they silverfish, especially bream and roach, can't cope with that. Not being hauled out on, on the bank in that heat, and that was yesterday. Um, it's the same with carp. You can't be putting them in retainers and, and mucking about and twenty twenty. But you can't be doing that if you if you are. I'd question why 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 you don't know any better, to be honest. And this is the same every year. None of this is new news. None of this is new. We've, you know, the climate is changing, and a lot of what we see with weed and algae and and and, uh, and water levels and lack of rain, and people lose fish, and they 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 send you pictures of ten different types of weed and uh, and algae, and take pictures. And, and I don't think it's as relevant uh, what type of weed it is or what exactly the color the the algae is. It's it's climate. It's it's getting warmer. And we're not having those nice cold winters to to knock it all on the head, and, and it's like a reset button. The winter used to be like a reset button, and it's not anymore. So a combination of all these things: low water level, lack of rain, um, extreme heat, and very mild winters. Um, you know that that's that's just a, a melting pot of, of of potential disasters for a fishery manager. So it's getting more and more difficult. But we're all and predation, obviously. But we're all in the same boat, you know. And there's there's lots and lots of ways you can. You can preempt these problems and you can prepare your fishery for these problems, but you don't do it now. You don't do it in the summertime. And I keep saying this, you, do, you, you don't. It's very good to, to, if you just bought a fishery or, you know, you just bit got involved now, now is a fantastic time to see what's going on because you can see any problems. If you've got problems on your fishery, now's the time you're going to see it. And fish love the heat in, 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 in a way, um, but at the same time, they don't like 
the stress is exacerbated, so they'll be a lot more stressed when they're handled. So as an angler, it's your responsibility not to do that. Um, I'm not saying nobody should go fishing at all when it's really, really hot. I'm just saying think about what you're doing and where you're going and, and, and how you're being seen by non-anglers. That's very relevant as well. But, you know, it's... It is what it is, and it's gonna. It's not gonna. It's meant to be even hotter at the weekend. So um, yeah, just think about what you're doing. I mean, the last thing I'd want to do is sit in a bivy or have a brolly when it's this hot. Um, but you know, some people uh, probably haven't got anything else to do. But um, yeah, we're always here, and we try and answer as many of our calls straight away as we can because I know what it's like. Um, and we do help people with aeration issues. Uh, we do do call outs and stuff, but we can't. Uh, we you know we literally just got back. We we got home at midnight last night and I'm off out again right now. So, yes, I uh, wouldn't be doing anything else, but uh, we just try and help as many people as we can and wish everyone the best all summer because it's tough. <laughs>